Paula Kerman. I was delighted when I was given the honor of introducing Paula. And we, one thing we try to do every year with this, with this award ceremony is choose a speaker who sort of complements our award winner. And I think David Clemenhager was a wonderful choice because you're both on the same page very much. When I was asked to do this, I had, the first thing I thought about was how long I've known Paula. And we don't know each other very well, but I tried to think back. And it's been, I can't remember when, I started noticing this young woman who was everywhere. Everywhere I went, Paula was there. And first of all, behind her guitar, and then behind a guitar and a microphone, and then very early on behind a camera and a guitar and a microphone, and then behind a movie camera, I guess they're called video something, video cameras now, and the, and the microphone and the guitar, and doing all of it simultaneously as she is tonight, except she's not singing, but here she is taping her own award ceremony and taping still photos, because, and nobody else really is, and that's what Paula does, because as, as we wrote in the program, so I won't, I won't just repeat what's in the program, but that's what Paula does. She was a very early, early adapter, adopter of, of seeing the possibility of this media, that there are a lot of us working towards the same ends, and working in our little silos without a lot of communication with each other or awareness of each other, and Paula saw that and started linking people together. And David's ideas are wonderful. And he's talking about the future, and he's talking about progressive voices. And that's what Paula does. And would you know, she's doing it for free. She's totally freelance. So we're going to have to f try to figure out a way, as you're talking about David, that, that she can get money for what she does, too. Because she's connected. Yes. <laughs> because she's connected. <laughs> Because she's connecting us all with blogs and with YouTubes and all those things that we can look at whenever we want and put together. And well, how to make a living, that's always a tough one. But um, so that's, that's what Paul has been doing and we're just delighted to have that she's accepted this award tonight. And thank you, Paula Kerman. When uh, Jim Burnett called me back in January to inform me that I had been chosen as this year's recipient, I was at a loss for words. And for someone like myself who makes a living with words, that is indeed very rare. <laughs> then I found myself in a similar situation when I sat down to write my words of acceptance. So let me begin by giving thanks. Thank you to Project Plowshares for making this event possible. Thank you to the awards organizing committee for selecting me, especially to Alison Scott Prilorensos for honoring her late husband in this matter. Thank you to David Klemenhaga for speaking tonight and to Terry Morrison for gracing us with her wonderful music. And Mr. Kalia, congratulations for your lifetime service award. And thank you to all of you for coming out this evening. It really does mean a lot to me, more than I could ever express. I am very honored and humbled to have been chosen as this year's recipient, especially when I reflect upon the incredible people and organizations who have stood up here in past years, many of whom I am privileged to call my friends and my brothers and sisters in our common struggle to bring about a world of peace and justice. Now, I will tell you a bit about myself. As a child, I made an impassioned plea 
to my parents for two things, a camera and a guitar. <laughs> I am fortunate that my parents indulge me, although I have to admit that the guitar took a little more convincing. And communication is what I do professionally, and there is a need for communication about peace and matters of social justice between organizations, individuals, and the world. We have the technology at our fingertips to do this. I am fortunate to be part of a generation to embrace social media, as well as the technological gadgets that make archiving and sharing possible. Then it was just a matter of connecting with the local peace community, something I did not know existed until I purposely went about looking for it. And when I found it, I showed up at a peace rally with a digital camera and started taking pictures. I think there's some people here who remember that day. <laughs> at that time, I was really the only person taking pictures at these sorts of events, and then the first to get the images online to be shared. When I saw the possibilities to really show the rest of Edmonton and beyond that the city really does have an active, engaged peace community, this expanded into acquiring a video camera. It's over there. <laughs> It's actually my second one, I broke the first one. <laughs> Learning to edit film footage, as well as increasing the number of social networks upon which I share my work, while getting into more sophisticated forms of blogging and website design. I am now so enthusiastic to see others showing up to events with cameras and getting online and sharing and commenting. Those of us who are privileged enough to be able to access and use technology have a choice to use developments like social media for the good of society. It gives us the opportunity to become independent citizen journalists and present our perspectives in a widely public forum, but in a way that is very real with the human element. Equally important to presenting and showcasing the city's activist movement is sustaining it. In order to make sure that the city has a peace movement that stays active, it has to stay relevant and attract younger people. Love it or hate it, the so-called new media is how to make this happen. When I do things like get Project Plowshares onto Facebook and reviving the website for the Edmonton Coalition Against War and Racism, it is with a sense of excitement for the future. Now, about that guitar. <laughs> when I got involved in the local peace movement, it was a natural transition to start to write songs with social meaning. I was, after all, raised on a steady musical diet of Joan Baez and Bob Dylan. It was also a way of being more directly involved with events rather than always just standing on the sidelines with a camera. And again, thanks to social media, I've been able to reach an audience far beyond just the people who show up at the events. At the same time, also thanks to social media, my activism has been very public and that is not without its challenges, personally and professionally. But like I said earlier, we have the tools at our fingertips to share and build our movement. It comes down to a matter of choice, and I have considered working towards peace to be a personal responsibility. And on that note, I will end with the chorus of a song I wrote about choosing to stand up for peace in the face of resistance. It's called Walls. I can't sit on the fence anymore when I have to choose between peace and war and object to oppression where it arises, no matter what else it is disguised as. I hope that we can all make similar choices in our lives. Thank you. Netta, Allison, and Paula. What a fabulous way to end a great evening.